But what we know from the work we've done, and, and I have to say the work we've done working with the, uh, the government in, the, uh, in developing those plans for Northern Powerhouse Rail proposals was very much evidence-based. We understand the economic potential. We understand the importance of transforming connections between our great towns and cities, not just between Leeds and Manchester, but actually from Liverpool across to Hull, from Sheffield up to Newcastle. It's a fully integrated network that we're looking for. And at the heart of that proposal was the recognition that to get the transformation, you need to build new lines. You need to build a new line connecting Manchester and Bradford and Leeds so that you don't have the disruption whilst you're upgrading existing lines and still continuing to uh, allow people and businesses to go about their daily lives. That's a really interesting point there and one that I actually hadn't considered on the disruption point because of course the Prime Minister's argument this morning appears to be that if we went to build new lines we wouldn't see the benefits for 20 years, that it would be very expensive and we could see benefits sooner by doing in incremental upgrades to existing lines. But you're saying that potentially incremental upgrades might make things worse in the short term even if it improves things in the medium term. Well, we know from experience, don't we, that um, if you're looking to upgrade existing railway tracks, you have to do it when uh, people aren't needing to use them. And the trouble here is that, um, unlike the rest of the country, we've seen passengers return to our existing rail services much faster than the rest of the country. Some of our uh, train operators are now reporting um, passenger levels about 80, 85 percent of pre-COVID levels. If I look at the freight demand, um, freight paths are fully committed across the region. This is a sign of how the rail network is so important to the north. It's also a sign of the limitations of our existing two-track Victorian railway infrastructure, which is why consistently the board has set out the importance of transformational infrastructure, actually integrating infrastructure. So our proposals for between the leap between Sheffield and Lees deliberately chose to integrate what was being done with HS2 so that we use it also for the Northern Powerhouse Rail uh, services as well. It's a, it's a fully integrated approach that we were setting out. It's interesting to see that currently the government has been pretty coy. There have been uh, announcements in some newspapers, but the way that this is trying to be spun is that this is a grand big improvement for the North. Do you accept that there is more investment coming to the North, perhaps not as much as was promised initially, but things will be getting better? Well, it's undoubtedly good to see the investment. And we saw some of the announcements at the budget about the investments in the uh, city regions. And we've got work already ongoing in upgrading the existing Trans Pennine route between Manchester and Leeds. But we've consistently said we've got to take a longer term view here. What is the economic potential of the North? And we saw that being set out very clearly in the original uh, Northern Powerhouse Economic Review. A hundred billion increase in the economy. 850,000 jobs, the delivering the houses that are in the people's plans at a local level. All of that requires transformational infrastructure. And the simple message is, the sooner you start delivering the transformational infrastructure, the sooner you start realizing the benefits for the residents and the businesses, and you see the, the, the wealth and the growth uh, of the North coming through and supporting the rest of the country. Well, it will be very interesting to see whether the go government's argument that a cheaper cost to taxpayers and more immediate delivery is better or a slightly higher capital investment and better stuff in the long term is actually what the country needs. I, I wonder that there's probably a problem here in elected politics in that politicians always have a short term view. They're looking to the next five years rather than the next 25 years. Um, but... I wonder how much that's played into the announcement today. We wait until 10.30 to see all of the detail. But